The way these vessels operate is that they lay anywhere from 30 to 50 miles of net out each night uh, that they're in the fishing area. It's very fine monofilament nylon net. It's laid out in these long lines, and the net is left in the water for a period of six to eight hours. And then the vessels uh, return and begin to pull the nets up. The nets are pulled on board with the help of hydraulics. Uh, they're picked clean, and then the nets are transferred to the back of the ships uh, with, a, with another set of hydraulics where they are stacked and made ready for being deployed th that evening. It's a very continuous process, and it's easy to see why they're able to lay uh, such vast quantities of net out uh, after night. It's a very efficient operation. It's also very wasteful. Not only are a lot of non-target species caught and killed in these nets, Many of the target species, like squid and tuna, that are trapped in the nets actually fall out while the nets are being retrieved. It's like biologically strip mining the ocean. In the case of the squid fishery, we're looking at enough net to circle the planet twice at these latitudes. It's something of a suicidal labyrinth for dolphins and whales. Most fisheries are species specific in that they target only one or two types of fish, and it's rare or infrequent that there's any mortality to wildlife. In the case of the drift net fishery, though, virtually everything in the area stands a very good chance of being caught and killed. Marketable species are kept, and the rest is simply dumped overboard. This fishery has all the potential for an ecological disaster in the making. It's not really too hard to appreciate the destructive nature of this fishery. In some ways, it's analogous to clear-cutting a forest in order to harvest a single species of tree. We'll probably never be able to fully grasp just how much damage has been done in the 10 years since these boats began fishing. We know so very little about the dynamics of the Pacific marine ecosystem, but it's, it's certain that there have been serious depletions in populations to uh, dolphins and, and other marine mammals since the fishery began. One of the vessel captains who has been in this fishery since it began told us that they don't kill nearly as many dolphins as they used to. In a fishery where the only changes in 10 years have been the incredible growth in the size of the fleet and the amount of net that's being deployed, I think it's very easy to see why. There simply aren't as many dolphins left to kill. The drift net fleet is also suspected of causing decreases in the number of seals and seabirds in Pacific rookeries. Further concerns stem from the disappearance of juvenile humpback whales, which migrate through the drift net area twice a year. Also at issue is the problem of ghost nets, which are nets that have become lost or abandoned at sea. In addition to posing hazards to navigation, ghost nets may drift at sea for years. These nets continue fishing, killing large numbers of fish and wildlife, alternately sinking and floating back to the surface as they become weighed down with the bodies of sea creatures. In December of 1987, the U.S. Congress passed the Drift Net Impact Monitoring Assessment and Control Act. Under this U.S. law, nations which refuse to cooperate with the U.S. by supplying information on impacts to fisheries and wildlife may be subject to trade sanctions. However, international cooperation is still virtually non-existent. And as the world's governments slowly react to yesterday's data, vital time is being lost. We will never know just how much we have already lost in the North Pacific. Drift netting may be the most destructive method of fishing ever devised by man. Simply monitoring the activities of the fleets will tell us little that we do not already know. And it will certainly do nothing to counteract the damage that has been done. We urge you to join us in pressuring Congress to work toward the elimination of this wasteful and reckless form of technology. The oceans belong to all of us and to the generations that will follow us as well. As the sun sets on the Pacific tonight, 30,000 miles of net will be laid out to capture everything in its path. At this point, no one can say when the life systems of the Pacific will reach the breaking point. All biologists can say is that there will be a breaking point, and we are rapidly approaching it.
we know that uh, 